Hi there. Welcome to Boomer Tubes Podcast, the place for baby boomers to come play with your own age group. I'm Deb, and I'm your host. Before we get into today's show, I want to make sure to let you know that we would love to make your story a part of our podcast. So please visit our website for information on how to submit stories or music. If you have a unique, funny, or poignant anecdote about growing up, your teenage years, music, cars, dating, your parents, anything you think our listeners might enjoy, send it to us. We're boomers, and most of us were raised by the greatest generation, an exceptional group of people who deserve our enduring respect. Okay, let's get to it. One of the most iconic fashion statements from the 60s and 70s were bell-bottom pants. Bell-bottoms, or flares as they were also called, are pants that become wider from the knees downward, forming a bell-like shape of the trouser leg. And unless you've been living under a rock for the past several decades, you are more than just a little familiar with bells. (laughs) Where did bells come from? I always knew there was a nautical connection, but I wasn't sure exactly how or why sailors adopted the style. So I did a little research. In 1813, one of the first recorded descriptions of sailors' uniforms noted that the men on the frigates United States and Macedonia were wearing, quote, glazed canvas hats with stiff brims, decked with streamers of ribbon, blue jackets buttoned closely over waistcoats, and blue trousers with bell bottoms. Although the trousers of the present-day uniform of the U.S. Navy are still referred to as bell-bottomed, they simply have large, straight legs. The wearer's thigh fills the upper trouser leg, making the bottom of the pant leg appear flared. This style has been popular for many years, perhaps originally because the trouser leg can be rolled up easily, allowing the wearer to work in bare feet. But there's no reliable documentation that confirms a specific timeline or reason for the popularity of bell-bottom trousers in naval apparel. Some modern naval uniforms continue to use bell-bottom trousers as a potential life-saving device. The trouser material is made of cotton fibers that swell when wet and can hold air. In the event of a sailor falling overboard or having to abandon ship without a life vest, the bell-bottom trousers can be quickly removed in the water without having to remove shoes. As part of their survival training, sailors are taught to remove the trousers while floating, tie the leg bottoms in a knot, and then use one of several methods to inflate the trousers with air. The inflated trousers can provide extra flotation while sailors wait to be rescued. Pretty cool fact. Another traditional use for bell bottoms is by European carpenters, who have worn them for centuries. The widening legs prevent sawdust from falling into their shoes. Clever. So now we know where bells came from, theoretically. But then I wondered... How did bell-bottoms make the jump from sailors of the 1800s to the fashion craze of the 60s and 70s? Well, here's one story. London, 1963. A medical student with no casual trousers to wear asked his mother to open up the seams of a pair of almost new drainpipe jeans that wouldn't pull up over his thighs. When I say drainpipe, think Beatles' skinny jeans. (laughs) So his mom opened the outside seams to the mid-thigh and inserted pale blue inserts, and in doing so, overdid it a bit. The results were floppy-bottomed trousers that were still snug around the top. The student's weekly grocery shopping trip was on King's Road in Chelsea, and he wore his modified jeans. The following week, that area had about 20 people who had also altered their old drain pipes. About three weeks later, hundreds of alterations had been created. And voila! Bell bottoms became fashionable for both men and women in London and expanded into Europe and North America. By the 70s, 
bell bottoms were mainstream fashion, with celebrities like Sonny and Cher wearing them on their popular TV show. The pants were typically flared from the knee down, with bottom leg openings that varied with different levels of flare, with some having openings of up to 26 inches. Made from denim, bright cotton, and satin polyester, bell bottoms were so popular that they became a symbol of the outlandish and colorful styles of the decade. Loon pants, short for balloon pants, were a variant on bell bottom trousers with an increased flare. They were worn occasionally by go go dancers on the British scene. Elephant bells, popular in the mid to late 70s, were similar to loon pants but were typically made of denim. Elephant belts had a major flare below the knee, often covering the wearer's shoes. The preferred shoes were platforms with soles of at least two inches thick and heels four to five inches high to keep hems off the ground. After the rise of punk rock in the late 70s, Bell bottoms began to become less fashionable as the decade grew to a close. By 1979, skin-tight trousers or 50s-style drain pipes were much more in vogue, with bell bottoms being seen as having had their day from 67 to 78. Bell bottoms then waffled back and forth and in and out of fashion for a couple of decades, and by around 2006, the bell-shaped silhouette started to fade as the skinny jean rose in popularity. Ugh. Gone are the days of donning your favorite pair of bells in a tie-dye t-shirt or silk disco shirt and heading for the club. But that's okay. We remember. We're boomers. If you've listened to our previous podcast, you know we like to showcase original music written and performed by our listeners. We play this episode's song here, then post it at BoomerTube, where you can download it. The name of the artist and their contact information is posted there as well. We are so excited to welcome back one of our favorite artists for this episode, Mr. Steve Eaton. It takes a special musician to achieve commercial success, artistic recognition, and corporate appreciation. It takes a special human being to come out of it with the moniker, everyone's friend. Steve Eaton is an Idaho gem, a winner of the Governor's Award for Artistic Contribution, a favorite of music scenes across the state, and most importantly, the coolest guy in the room everyone wants to know. Currently a resident of Boise, Idaho, Steve's musical talent cuts across every genre, from folk to jazz, and displays his mastery of the piano, keyboards, harmonica, and guitar. In addition to working as a session musician and entertainer, he's been a recording artist for Capitol and RCA Records, and a songwriter for Art Garfunkel, The Carpenters, The Righteous Brothers, Glenn Campbell, and Anne Murray. Steve has also headlined at many international musical events. From Steve's 2003 album, Out of the Blues, here is You Can Get Your Love Right Here. Chase the northern lights across the great divide Take a shooting star on a cosmic ride But it's a long ways to travel with heaven so near You can get your love right here You can fly your lair jet to the south of France Sail across the ocean and watch the dolphins dance But if you're looking for romance, you've nothing to fear You can get your love right here Oh, that really matters Are the stars and moon up above Solve the mysteries of love You can go on a journey to Kathmandu Do some meditation with your own guru But then you'll find the answer is perfectly clear You 
You just heard, You Can Get Your Love Right Here. A big thank you once again to Steve for allowing us to share his timeless music. We love to hear and play original music, so if you're listening and you're an artist, I hope this inspires you to send us yours. We like to keep it classic like rock, country, or the blues, but if you've got a tune representing another genre or an instrumental, we'd love to hear it. You'll find guidelines for submitting music to us at BoomerTube.com. Please make it a recording with a group or an instrument. Put on your best voice and let us help you showcase your work, because you never know who might be listening. And, as we mentioned at the top of the program, we would love to make your story a part of our podcast. I'd love to hear from you. And if you've enjoyed our podcast, it would mean a lot to us if you would share it with your friends and family. Once again, the website is BoomerTube.com. And you can email me at deb at boomertube.com. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, come play with your own age group. Deb out.